Hi guys, Matt Horspool here. Uh, I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker based in Sydney, Australia. And today I really wanted to talk to you about a topic of a hot contention that I see on forums and online um, platforms regarding Micro Four Thirds and specifically Olympus cameras and how they can or can't be used in professional or commercial settings. So what I wanted to do today is show you a little bit about how I'm using the system uh, for my professional work, go through some of the photos, some of the things that, uh, some of the settings and some of the equipment that I use and tell you why I use those and how they've actually enabled me to get the jobs that you see on the screen uh, coming up soon. I'd like to use this video as a bit of a platform to have a bit of a discussion. Um, you can give me your thoughts on my work, on the kind of equipment that I'm using, um, ask some questions. Maybe you're using the same kind of equipment in, in a genre or a field that, that I am or maybe in a different one and you need some help with that. I'm open to uh, all types of conversation. I'm sure there's going to be some negative people on there, but hey, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and this one's going to be mine. So yeah, drop us a comment in the um, description below and then let me know if you are using the Olympus system for professional commercial work. Now, I also really wanted to show you how not only has this system helped me get these really cool jobs, but I wanted to show you that it's not just the camera that is helping me get the next job or the next two jobs. It's all of these things, hard work, research, um, being in the right place at the right time, networking, that all come together and help snowball to get to the next level. So it's not purely just the camera and anyone that says that it is, uh, no matter what camera system you're using is, well, I reckon they're actually full of shit. So a little bit about me as well. Uh, I am 33 years old. I've been working as a professional um, maybe the past two and a half years. Uh, I quit my job as a special needs teacher, full-time teacher, uh, in 2019 and spent most of 2019 traveling around the world working on really cool projects. I started photography back in 2009 when I went to Patagonia and in Brazil and, and Peru and really fell in love with the mountains and had bought a little point and shoot camera, a little Panasonic. And then I moved back to Australia after that and I thought, this is really, really cool. I want to keep doing this. So I bought the first Sony uh, NEX5. I think it was like the first mirrorless camera ever ever created back then. And then I set off around the world for three and a half years, traveling, working, and yeah, just taking photos, but just for fun. So then I came back in 2014 and I thought, well, I could, people were loving my images. I discovered Instagram. I started networking with people. I started get um, I got asked to do a wedding, but asked to cover an event. And I thought, well, this is pretty cool. So I purchased more camera gear. I ended up with a Nikon D750, which I also still have now. I kind of fell into the Olympus role when me and my friend Kel Morales, I'll link his stuff there, we applied for an Olympus grant, it's called the Olympus Vision Project back in 2017, and we put a lot of effort in, we basically mapped out an entire trip, um, it took us weeks, and we pitched it to Olympus and they loved it, and basically that trip was to self-drive and self-travel around Central Asia, namely Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, and document all of these unknown remote areas uh, using Olympus cameras, both stills and some photo, some video on the side to support it. And basically that thing blew up. So from there, I started working more with Olympus and yeah, it just kind of rolled on in and then this is where I am today. So I kind of didn't want to get too much into the gear because, well, if you want to see my full kit, maybe drop us a comment below and, and let me know if you'd like to do a gear um, or what's in my bag kind of video, but I'm more than happy to do that. But basically what I'm shooting on today is the EM1 Mark III is filming as we speak. And I've got in the background, I have uh, two EM1Xs, two EM1 Mark IIs. I have the TG6, um, also have an EM5 Mark II, I think in a housing. Some of these extra cameras that I've got I use for my underwater workshops. Uh, yeah, so people can use them. And then I have the whole plethora of pro lenses uh, and also including the 60mm macro and the 8mm fisheye, which I don't use that much. But apart from that, I use all of the pro lenses and I use them across a wide variety of travel, um, wedding, event, portrait, underwater, all that type of photography. I use all of them depending on which job it is. So I really chose to stay with the with the system because the technology Olympus is always using uh, 
cutting edge technology that the others follow on after. So namely the, the really amazing IBIS handheld high res, uh, the tripod high res modes as well that the other brands have now starting to introduce. What I really loved is the weather sealing and the ruggedness because I'm out in the field where things get really, really uh, rough, dirty, wet, and these things are like, built like tanks. I'm, I'm sure if you're watching this, uh, you already know that. Even, um, even some of the cheaper like prosumer models are really, really tough and I've, I've put them through their paces as well. And at the time, Cinema 4K 24P, which is what these cameras can, can shoot, was, was brilliant. Um, yes, they are, are lacking a bit now, so hopefully in the next iterations of the cameras, they're going to be, we would like some 10 bit internal. Let's put it that way. But also the video, I've shot it with it recently and I know Chris Walker, who you probably already know, has made some amazing films. So I'll link his stuff below or up there. And yeah, check his stuff out, um, specifically slacklining one in Faroe Islands that made it to Banff Film Festival. Amazing, it's all about the story and not about the camera gear. People, people really forget that. I also chose to use the system because I do a lot of underwater photography, not just uh, commercially, but running my workshops. And having a, an Olympus housing that is native to the EM1 Mark II is brilliant. Um, it doesn't cost as much as some of the like the Nordicam housings. It's mapped natively. There's only literally two buttons at the front that I can't use. And the EM1 Mark II was renowned, or Olympus in general, are renowned for having really, really good underwater cameras. Um, because of their size, their speed, and underwater, we don't need lots of depth. We actually want a narrower depth of field. So having a smaller sensor is actually advantageous. And that's what I teach a lot of my, uh, my students as well. Being able to shoot at F8, we're actually getting like F16 of, of depth. So it's really, really handy when we're underwater. I should also mention as well as a disclaimer, I'm not being paid to do this. Uh, Olympus don't even know that I'm I'm, I'm filming this, I just thought it would be a, a really great way to show people, maybe Olympus users and other people thinking of moving to the system or might have hesitations about the system to see the kind of work that you can get and how this camera system is used as a tool and actually enables you or me to get uh, these really, really cool jobs all around the world. People are also going to say that 20 megapixel isn't enough for commercial work. Well. I can really understand why 48 megapixel and this big megapixel war is, is forefront of a lot of people's minds because it's really in the media, it's hyped up a lot. However, I have never had a client say, I'm sorry, I, I, this is not enough megapixels. Uh, I know a lot of the other um, Olympus users are exactly the same. No one's ever said that there's not enough. I understand that it's really good to be able to crop in after, however, with the size of the lens, I can actually just shoot it natively and not have to crop in because I can just, I can get it with, within camera. So I honestly, I feel that it's not, never been an issue. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to the computer and I'm going to go through my website and some of the, um, some of the jobs that I've done and walk you through, try and try and do it chronologically um, and show you, show you some of the, the shots that I've gotten, what equipment I've used and how that those shots were taken and then how that snowballed into the next one. So grab a coffee, sit back and relax. I'll try and keep it short, but yeah, we'll jump over to the computer. Um, if there is any other questions that you have, please drop them in the comments below. Um, and yeah, let's go from there. But first of all, how cool are these uh, wallpapers? Uh, I've got a, my good friend, Matt Donovan, who I was creates, I'll, I'll link him below, uh, making these really cool retro uh, and creative wallpapers, only six bucks. So I wanted to start, well, I'm not gonna go through all of the, the different, um, uh, spend a whole heap of time, but I wanted to tell you, talk about how these cameras, I use them and then how that bounced into the next job. So I talked about before the Stan Collective, this was our first big, big trip. And it, like we jumped in early before, um, before the Lonely Planet named as one of the key places in the world to go and visit. So. So some of these images have, have, have won a lot of awards and they've, they've gone viral and like this one here was featured on Nat Geo, this one here was like top three on the Rome um, competition. Uh, we took two EM1 Mark IIs, the 12 to 100 mil, uh, the 300 mil, they were all brand new at the time um, and a whole heap of pro lenses and um, 
and premium lenses as well because some of the pro lenses weren't available at that time so yeah got to go shoot a wide variety of uh, situations like portraits landscapes um, some of the aerials as well um, a lot of the video we used the new um, the new what mode is it called we used the new live composite mode for shots like this as well. So we had such a variety of um, a tools in our arsenal. That we could shoot all types of things, anything that we saw. And that was really key because we honestly had no idea what we were going to come across uh, around every bend. So I really do urge you to come and check those stuff out, even if it's just to, to see the beauty of, of Central Asia. So then I came back and I got to go and work with uh, Intrepid Australia because I saw my stuff from Kyrgyzstan, I saw what I could do um, and I went off to Italy and shot some content for them for one of their tours and it was my second time being in Italy and I was super lucky in Venice that we had some epic fog. So a lot of these shots here, uh, again using the 12 to 100, 7 to 14 mil, um, the insane Ibis, I didn't have to use a tripod for a lot of them, I could, I could like hand hold. Um, long exposures, which are really handy when places you're not meant to use tripods. Um, so yeah, a lot of their shots have done really, really well um, online. Won't go through those ones too much. So I got back from there and then 2019, I had a really, really bumpy year. It's the first year I'd finished teaching uh, full time and I thought, let's do this, let's go full time. So I got to go to like seven different countries, work for really cool brands. So we'll go through some of that. So the first job came, uh, I pitched to Olympus uh, the EM1X had just come out. I said, hey, give me two of those. I'm going to go to India for a month. I'm going to shoot every day of Holy Festival and I'm not going to use any uh, rain covers or any housings on it. I'm going to show everyone, I'm going to show the world, I'm going to show you just how good the weather ceiling is and the photos that I can get. So I did just that. I went with my mate Kieran Malor and we headed off to India and shot the Holy Festival and got some really unique photos um, that other people couldn't, couldn't get. And I had people... From, like professionals everywhere like Art Wolf was there or like a lot of really really established photographers and they were all looking at me going why haven't you got any cover on how how are you going to protect the camera I said mate I don't need to I'll, I'll go in the shower I, I posted a video somewhere on my on my Instagram showing me washing the cameras in the shower after I'd used them um, I got to use the new live ND mode on a shot like this I had I was reaching out with the 7 to 14 mil in the most hectic um, crowd ever reaching across the balcony holding it over doing a handheld long exposure uh tack sharp using one hand because was, the camera was light enough and did a long exposure in the middle of the day and got a shot like that which now got featured in the uh, top colorful places in the world on nat geo other shots like like this the the yellow one here and, and the pink one here again i was just two camera bodies all the time 12 to 100 17 mil and sometimes a 45 mil and I had a lens cap on, I saw an opportunity to pull it off, bang, shoot one hand, got shots that other people were fumbling through, um, their plastic rain covers, couldn't see, were missing shots. So I think it was bomb proof. You can see here the girls are pouring water to wash my camera. Um, great for all types of street, super tack sharp, having at the time as well, the eye autofocus was just uh, like top of the game. See all of the wetness that you could get here. <laughs> Uh, handheld high res as well giving me opportunity to shoot high megapixels uh, without the use of a tripod and you see here like this was in the middle of the night and I'm still getting great shots even at ISO 6400 so all of those people talking about like the ISO issues well I, I don't have any issue uh, it's better to get the shots deal with the noise after than the wind and not actually get any shots again live ND mode middle of the day and I can get long exposures without an ND filter. No one wants to shoot ND filters in a crowd like this. First first 10 minutes of walking into, into the crowd. So from India, I then had a pretty decent portfolio, uh, starting portfolio, and I pitched to a company called Aurora Expeditions, and they said, hey, we love your India stuff. We saw how you can capture amazing content of, of people and emotions. Do you want to go off to uh, Svalbard, Eastern Greenland and Iceland and capture marketing content for us. And I went, hell yeah. So I went off on that. Now let me talk about the system for uh, polar expeditions. I honestly and wholeheartedly believe 
that there is no better system built for polar regions. The weather ceiling, as you saw before, is insane. Like these places get so windy, cold, uh, sleet, you potentially dropping your camera in the water, which I'd be totally fine doing if, if it was just shallow. Um, I'm wearing huge jackets. I need to, I, I'm working commercially. I need to have two cameras and I need to be, move, be able to move fast. I can't miss shots because I can't go back and get them. We're moving in Zodiacs like in this one. The timing of this, I, I had one opportunity to get this because it's paying customers. I can't just say, hey guys, just move back. Let me get this shot. I just have to anticipate, shoot, and the camera's already there. They're not bulky. I'm not taking huge amounts of space in the Zodiacs as well. Uh, small cameras, rugged, sharp, uh, are ideal for this type of stuff. And ideally, you don't want too much depth anyway because it's like the underwater stuff, especially in landscapes, the smaller sensor actually is, is, a, is a godsend. So I got to go through and shoot some just insane places. So it blew my mind. And I got back and obviously Aurora were really, really happy um, with the shots and we'll talk about that afterwards. So obviously getting images like this in a in unique location um, really, really added to the portfolio of the other things, uh, of the other shoots that I had. So I then went off to Japan, worked for uh, Japan National Tourism. Uh, this was a bit of an easier one. We had a car to go around. I, I could take my time a little more, but again, I shot with two lenses all the time. I only had four days there, so there was a variety of photos there, but we'll move on a bit. After that, I went off to Rwanda, Central, um, Central Africa. First time I'd ever been to Africa, apart from Egypt, many, many years before that. Um, I was invited there uh, by the RDB, Rwandan Development Board, and it was the first, I was the only professional photographer invited that year, along with some um, some leading journalists from around the world, and they took us around, and I got to capture some images for the RDB to use in their, in their marketing. Um, and again, th this is a country that, as for those people who have seen Hotel Rwanda and know about, um, about the, the terrible history, they don't want cameras and stuff in their face. So having something small walking the streets was really, really handy um, to get the street shots. Um, then when we were doing the life, uh, the wildlife photos, I was in a, in a Jeep, uh, I'm sorry, not a Jeep, a, a Land Cruiser and, and the Safari built ones. And I needed two cameras and I had two zoom telephotos. I had the 300 mil with the two times tele on the EM1X and on the EM1 Mark II, I had the 40 to 150 with the 1.4 times teleconverter and that covered most shots that I could get and I had them nice and accessible in the car whereas other people didn't couldn't carry their massive lenses because they, they couldn't get them over to, to, the, um, to the country on the flights and plus they're too expensive. So I got to have two lenses and could capture all of these different shots again uh, without missing and hassling for big lenses. I then got to go to uh, photograph the mountain gorillas which was just absolutely insane. Now when you're hiking up into the mountain gorilla area um, for the last 50 meters you, you can't take your backpack so you can only take what you can carry. I took my two cameras, I took uh, 40 to 150, I took the 45 mil, the 7 to 14 and the 12 to 100 all with me, just stuffed into my pockets or on the camera, on the two cameras, whereas everyone else could take one lens because they had full frames and they couldn't carry anything else. So I was super lucky, got to take a variety of different um, shots and, and compositions because I got to use a small system that was fast light and a great autofocus and was perfect for shooting wildlife. And if they wanted small, you couldn't carry much, I got to go in. So I got back from Rwanda and I then headed off on a trip of a lifetime to Tonga and using, uh, as you know, I'm an underwater photographer. I shoot uh, a variety. I, I love shooting things like whales. Um, I also run underwater photography workshops and I, it's no secret people who, who do underwater photography, they know that the EM1 Mark II, the EM5 uh, Mark II, and the TG6 are like three of the best underwater cameras you can get for the price. And Olympus makes native housings for them, which is just 
absolutely incredible. Uh, it means that I've got access to all of the buttons mapped where they should be, except for maybe the first two near the lens, but who uses them anyway? So went over to, to Tonga, I took the my big housing for the EM1 Mark II, I took a, a backup body EM1 Mark II, which I could also use in land. I like to have that on the boat as well, not only for a backup, but you never want to open the housing uh, and let water come in because the fog can ruin your entire shoot. So not only have a backup uh, that's small, but also fits in the housing and can be used on land. It's like the perfect combo. So I can, I can go over with a minimal kit, but still get amazing underwater photos. So this first shot actually, um, the BBC actually reached out to me here a few months ago and said, hey, we loved all of your shots from the Arctic and Antarctica, which we'll get onto. Um, can we have some of the photos to use? I said, unfortunately, in your terms and conditions, they state that you can take the photos, do whatever you want with them. I said, sorry, I can't do that, they're under contract. But I sent them a heap of uh, whale shots and stuff from Rwanda and they loved the whale shots. This one here actually got posted uh, just under David Annabra's post on their, on their page as well. So pretty stoked with that. And for those of you who know Petapixel, they picked up all of these images and um, paid me to do a, a story on their website as well. So being able to shoot, I'm a free diver, get down super, um, even in low light, as you can see here, this is like at eight meters being able to, to shoot these um, these incredible creatures. Um, not not possible without a decent housing, um, a big dome and something that's light. Uh, you can pay an absolute fortune for them and the Olympus housing is not actually that expensive. You can even get really good stuff with the TG6, which we'll, I'll cover on an, in another video. Um, let me know in the comments below, if, do you use underwater stuff or would you like to see more underwater? Uh, content on how I use the Olympus system because um, I'm more than happy to do so. So a lot of these shots I would just shot in continuous mode about f8 high speed burst uh, and that again not going to be coming back never going to see uh, have these moments again shoot burst and don't worry about your memory cards. An absolutely incredible experience and, and you can see you get a heap of detail out of these shots. So from Tonga then I went to, the, the EM5 Mark III came out, Olympus said, hey, we've got this, um, this new camera coming out, can you come up with an idea? Uh, we want to, there's a lot of street stuff happening with this camera, would like you to go out and, and test the weather seal and do some adventure stuff. So I said, hey, why not, why not go to, to, uh, to New Zealand because Everyone goes and shoots South Island. I said, well, there's some beautiful places in the North Island. So I got my mate, we went over, spent like two or three weeks uh, around the national parks there. Um, we had planned on it, there'd been less snow, but it turned out there was heaps of snow. Thank you, uh, Global Warming. And so I'd never used an EM5 uh, before. I'd, I'd recommended them to people before. I, and to my dad and a few other people and I knew they were great cameras um, but I never actually shot on them before there was some hesitations from a lot of people prior knowing that the, the body was going to be plastic um, however I honestly didn't feel it was an issue at all and like Brody who I got to come along he never touched an Olympus camera in his life he picked it up and it was so easy to use so intuitive um, and we had horrendously wet conditions you see here, the cameras got drenched, um, but we also had some beautiful light and just had so much fun shooting with such a small little camera. It's like, it's, li it's so light. It honestly feels like a toy um, in your hand, but paired with the pro lenses, it was, it was, it was great. And we're shooting again with the pro lenses and the 1.2s, we can get some pretty good low light. This was handheld long exposure using, uh, actually I don't think this was the live ND, it's just a long exposure handheld. Pretty good, right? No need for a tripod. I don't think we used a tripod the entire time except for a time lapse. And it, it just absolutely bucketed rain. You can see here, I got Brody to go behind the, the waterfalls. He was drenched. I was in there too. And the camera just kept performing. Like, this is the thing when like, I went to Tasmania as well, and the same thing. I can just keep the camera on my capture clip, another one slung around me. Um, I'm two hands free. 
uh, and I can shoot whenever I want. My mates that go with me with other cameras, they are the cameras are covered or in their bag and they're missing shots. I think the Olympus camera I can shoot all weather and it's just yeah, it's just amazing. Again, that was the that was a live ND with the fisheye. But we have lots and lots of shots here, but they say it's also this system you can I don't like to, but you can actually hang around your neck and it's not too tiring, or depending on the lens that you've got. Um, we should see what Brody's doing here. Um, especially the 12 to 100 is not that heavy, and with this body, it was uh, it was really good. Felt a little bit funny using the 300 mil, <laughs> quite off balance, but yeah. So from then, I throughout that year and through years before that as well, I. Also shot a um, variety of car things like with Lexus out in the desert. Again, I got to use the, the live composite mode to get some star trails. That's a single photo. Um, the, this insane in-body stabilization. I could literally sit in the back, we supported with a monopod while my mate drove and got a long exposure of the car. Like it was pretty crazy. Again, we get to use huge telephoto lenses that uh, a lot of people wouldn't get to use a 1200 mil and get some really compressed shots. It's the same when I work with Ford, uh, I use the EM1X and it has its inbuilt um, auto tracking mode for, for vehicles. So I don't even have to worry where it's tracking because it just can pick up the vehicle and just shoot. It was very, very handy for automotive stuff. Um, from there, I also shot some stuff for Shimoda, which was my other sponsor. Now I went canyoning with with uh, to shoot this bag, um, and my mate actually told me, "Oh yeah, it's waist height. You can keep it on your back." We got down to the end of this huge hike, ready to get in the water. This water was not waist height; it was over my head. So I actually had to push the bag like I had a dry bag. I stuffed two of my EM1 Mark IIs, the seven to fourteen mil, and the twelve to one hundred in a dry bag with no padding, and I was throwing them off waterfalls into the water and then swimming off and the humidity was insane. That's why we got these uh, these light rays. Um, and the cameras again, just were perfect. They were, they were so rugged and robust that they, they could deal with being thrown off waterfalls. And then I actually could get shots like this one, which has done really well. It made the, the cover of the Australian Photography Magazine um, and it's finalist in a few awards as well. And a lot of these I didn't even need to use a tripod for it. This one I did because it's a self-portrait, but some of the others could hand hold. Um, it's just for canyoning, get that one again, one of these. This one, this shot also made onto a um, full page of the Australian Weekender uh, newspaper. Like you can see that the, the cameras are enabling me to get into these places, to get seen by big publications, uh, which then adds to the portfolio, which then I can then send off to a new brand or uh, potentially someone else the brand might have seen uh, some of my work or some of the awards and they'll reach out to me. So again, don't think about what gear it is. Um, sorry, not that. Again, don't worry that your sensor is small and that it's a micro four thirds because you can get photos and get into different places that other people can't. So from there, I again shot a, a, a fair few different um, few different jobs, but then I got asked in January. Now this is just before COVID hit. Uh, well, actually, it was around the time COVID hit, and I actually got asked by Aurora Expeditions, would I like to go to Antarctica and capture content because they loved my Arctic stuff. And they wanted to keep things consistent. Um, and naturally again, I said yes. Now, unfortunately the trip was cut short due to COVID, so I only had four days on the, on the continent. Um, however, those four days I managed to shoot thousands and thousands and thousands of photos. I think over like the entire time I was there, I shot like 36,000 photos because in the brief that marketing, they want not only the shot that you think is the most beautiful, but different framings because they need to put logos, they want portraits, they need negative space. So maybe have the one scene, say for instance, this one, but I might shoot it four different compositions, not this one because this was a, uh, a heat of the moment shot, but say for this one here, uh, 
four different compositions using different spacing so they can use it for branding. So again, having this kit was invaluable for getting these shots. Like to have 1200 mil to be able to get compression and close and look how sharp these, like, these shots are. The weather was absolutely horrid on some days. It was so cold and the cameras just worked and worked and worked and they were light. I could carry two, I could carry all different focal lengths, primes if I wanted to use them. But again, for key moments like this, I could see this happening uh, in the distance. I knew I had one shot at it. I put it on burst, 12 to 100 mil. I got the Zodiac driver to, to slow down and fired off the shots and, and got that shot. And that one featured in the Daily Telegraph actually. Uh, the top destinations and 21 to, uh, to visit. Um, and see again, the weather was just horrendous on some days, but it just was so beautiful at the same time. Being able to shoot tele in places like this is, is key. When we're on the Zodiacs, you see wildlife, and you're not only going to get often one chance to, to, to shoot uh, these compositions, so having two bodies that don't interfere with other people on, on the uh, paying people um, on the Zodiac is, is really key. And you can get plenty of detailed dynamic range out of out of all of these uh, cameras. See here, these guys are shooting massive lenses and really struggling because they're so specific that I can carry all different lenses and put them on when I needed to. Anyway, you can go and check these out on my Instagram or uh, my website as well. I'll leave the link below. So that pretty much brought us to COVID and then we're in a different space now. I filmed some things with the Olympus as well using the ProRes where you can check on my YouTube. Uh, a variety of different other uh, small jobs and doing a lot of family stuff, shooting for weddings. I wanted to touch on the weddings as well because this is probably one of the areas where I actually think that the Micro Four Thirds does struggle. Event photography in low light is not at the strongest uh, strong point, and you do like to have some some depth with with your shots for the weddings, generally, um, especially inside. So, I think having a camera that has a bigger sensor was definitely uh, more helpful in events and potentially in in um, nighttime weddings. Um, but again, Olympus know as well. You use the camera as a tool for a specific job. And as you see, my jobs have been predominantly outdoors in horrible conditions, but cover 99% of the work that I do. And even uh, doing some of the family wedding stuff, have been totally fine. Like I still get some really good shots and I've never had a client complain. Because remember, you are the person who's going to be nitpicking rather than the client especially in a wedding situation so i have also shot a fair few portraits before uh, let's have a look here and for anyone who thinks that you can't get depth or or nice color and um sharpness in olympus well i beg to differ because those uh trio of primes are absolutely stunning for so this is a, a shoot that I did with with a friend of mine. Um, got to get in the underwater again, and honestly, there's you might be able to get 1.2 depth with a full frame, but depth is also people try and well I think anyway use depth um, to try and mask a little bit of maybe an unoriginal photo. Now not always. It's the same as with editing as well. People go over the top with the edit than to try and mask the fact that well, maybe the photo isn't that good. I try and make, try and always work in the mind space that the photo comes first, get it perfect, get the composition right, the light right, get it looking unique, and then the edit can complement that after. It shouldn't be that it's overpowering anything or, or masking anything. So, I mean, I've got a lot of other portraits you can have a look at as well, but again, I've never had a client that has worried about not having enough depth. So this is some of the wedding stuff as well. 100% uh, fine for pretty much everything. Like the, it's especially in a daytime wedding, you can get some really, really good shots. Um, 
because there's plenty of light. And I'm, I'm never afraid to boost the ISO up to ISO 6400 because modern cameras can deal with it, Olympus can deal with it. People aren't viewing them as giant billboards. So, so on a recent shoot I had, uh, I was off filming. I was using the Blackmagic, uh, which I can use my Olympus lenses on, which is phenomenal uh, just for workflow. Uh, and I was filming some motorbikes, uh, as you can see here, the Fanti Cablero with some friends. And my whole goal was to film. Now, to be able to have a, a second camera for stills, because I, I want to get some stills as well, uh, I couldn't have anything really large. So I used the EM1 Mark III, which this is filming on now, and had it uh, just the 12 to 40, which is the little equivalent to a 24 to 70, um, just tiny body sitting next to me, uh, not invading in any of my space and I could actually either sling it around my around my shoulder or put the little capture clip and have it attached to my belt um, so I always had a stills camera and a backup video camera with me at all times uh, and it didn't invade at all and so in between filming I managed to, to grab some of these these stills as well um, again the EM1X has the automotive mode which I didn't get to use and this I've not actually used on motorbikes but keen to use it um, so yeah and some of these shots like these ones I was using with, with the prime um, this was it was nearly pitch black at the time there so with like a half moon and at 1.2 the, the camera performs brilliantly we even at like ISO 800 so it's just so good to have a, a small camera that can get these shots um, without fumbling around with something big and there's no need for plenty of depth like the, the ibis we're in moving cars and i can get super steady shots or blurred shots dragging the shutter um, with ease because the ibis is just so good so yeah that brings me to a close i think that gives a, a, a good range of um, examples on the types of, of jobs that uh, I've done and you can do with Olympus cameras. Uh, they are by no means something that should inhibit you. People often think too much about the negatives and not about, okay, what can this camera do that can get me the shots that I need? And these cameras that have proven can actually get you amazing jobs and amazing content and actually help you in certain situations to get really unique content because let's put it this way if you're just being safe and and getting the shots that everyone else is getting then are you really trying to do the best that you can or, or striving to be unique probably not uh, think outside the box have a look at some of these people oh, um, who are using olympus cameras for some incredible work they're all visionaries so i mentioned Chrissy Walker, Scott Patelli, who does a lot of the polar stuff and underwater stuff, he's amazing. Michaela Skrovanova, who works with Nat Geo, she's an Olympus uh, visionary, does phenomenal underwater stuff, yeah, and works with Nat Geo with Olympus cameras. Um, Christopher Robert, he's a phenomenal portrait guy as well here in Australia. Nick Jonas is a, a, a wedding photographer and, and shoots some really incredible wedding stuff using Olympus system. There is plenty of people using these systems for incredible things. So I really urge you to go and check them, those people out as well. Drop a comment in the description below if you'd like to see any more stuff like this or maybe I can elaborate on anything else. I appreciate this is a long one. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, don't forget to subscribe or hit that bell below and I will see you again soon. Peace.